summarize the rest of the seven weeks, which is more on practical thing. This is like you know the theory, the seven, the first seven weeks. I, I made it so simple. For each week, there's some ten slides, not more than that. So if you just follow these slides, your exam is done. Sure. But these are the basics. These are the basics, and uh, and, 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 and uh, I'm very happy. It came out very even for me. It's good. Very good actually. I can just go on and uh, and explain all these uh, seven weeks even without looking at the slides. So the, so I I, I I request your full attention. And what I'll do is actually, you remember my email? I was asking you to come up with a table of your own. Yeah. Like week one, what is that you have done? Oh, week two, okay. what is that you have learned? Your own table. Okay. Yeah, something like this. See? I forgot her name. Always good. I should give you special marks. Uh, uh, what is your name? I. Sorry, I. Huh? I. Okay. See? She's, she brings this table. I'm just talking you all guys. So week one, what is policy, types of policy, that is the key word. Week two, what is welfare state, types of welfare, sources of welfare, regime theory or whatever. Week three, just policy making process and policy models. Week four, policy analysis and evaluation. Week five, policy uh, values and principles. And week six, welfare services and institutions. Yeah, she, she goes on like that. Something like that. Have anyone else done? I think you also have that. No. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Um, maybe it's, you guys missed in that big email, right? So what I'll do is I'll show you the slides, but I'm not going to explain. I'll only explain or add at the end. So you guys have to explain so that I know, you know whether you really you know, have gone through these slides or not. So that's why I'm asking him to also record. So that it's there, you know? Okay? That's fine? Is that okay? Just look at the slide and then say something. Okay? Is that okay? Ah, oh, friends at the back, Gabi, is okay? Good. Okay, this is what, remember this slide? I must say that I really enjoyed, in a way, teaching this course for the first time. And it gave me a lot of insights and a lot of confidence. And I'm sure next time I'll teach better maybe uh, make some revisions already and I'm always willing to learn from you guys as you can see from that slide uh, there's so much that you guys can share because you are the one who are doing the field work you know the what's happening and uh, you have all the time to think and reflect and you are interested in, in, in policy and you believe that policies do matter and, and, and policy uh, social work is all, all about a policy based profession so this slide I really uh, I remember, I think I have done, I have, uh, I have learned a lot. But remember, these are the course objectives that we have. You remember? <coughs> so you tell me how much is that we achieved. I know you already have done your evaluation, they will come back to me. But we can also re-look at what is, what are the course objectives and where are we. And if we have not achieved these objectives, I am ready to, you know, engage with you guys in you know, a few more classes or a few more weeks even after the exam because the exam is one thing but learning is another thing so yeah, as long as you're willing to learn and, and i'm here i'm here all the time you can again take up some 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 key terms or some key or whatever you want to know and again we can we can debate on that so look at the course objectives and see tell me how much you, you think we have achieved course objective number one Understand the nature of social problems and the external factors that influence the formulation of social welfare policies. What is this? Yesterday, I thought, what is this? Huh? Understand the nature of social problems. Any anything that we discussed about the social problems? Yeah, what causes the problems? Uh -huh. What are the social problems that we uh, kind of discuss, even in a little bit? Social problems. Refugees is a social problem. Yeah. Okay, what else? Uh, organ donations is a social problem. Yes. Alcohol and you know, uh, drinking alcohol and having liver diseases, your liver is removed or your kidney is not functioning and you wanted you know, someone else to donate you know, the liver to you or the kidney to you. What is that? Uh -huh. Welfare policies are all about addressing such 
a social problem. What else? What else we need to look at? Housing is a social problem. Yes. Access to drinking water is a social problem. Yes. Huh? Yes. Uh, what else? Uh, disability. Yeah, and the Senior citizens, yes. Homeless, yes. Poverty, yes. Drug addiction. We haven't discussed much, but that's a social issue. Maybe we haven't discussed the drug policy in detail, but some, I think, presentations tomorrow will will we'll talk about that. What else? Social problems, adoptions or uh, unmarried mothers. What is that uh, you will be talking about? The babies. The babies, yeah. The babies. It's a social problem, of course. What else? What else we just touched a little bit in this course? So if we think that, okay, these are the social problems, somehow we, we had the chance to look at it, and external factors that influence the formulation of social welfare policies. What are these external factors that we discussed? It's very difficult to translate these objectives. Uh, what are these external factors that we discussed? External factors is like the welfare, mm -hmm. uh, welfare by the government. Okay. Government uh, welfare uh, policy influence the social. Okay. In this case, uh, the government, the way the government functions. Okay. What else? What are the other external factors? There's all private state. Huh? Sorry. Sorry? Private, private state. state. Private sector, yes, we discussed about that. Definitely, you know, private sector are national factors in that way, influencing our social policy. For example, in the case of health, yeah. you know, we have a lot of private, you know, enterprise or private uh, health uh, care providers. Okay, what else? Globalization, what do you think? Globalization, yeah. Okay. All the stakeholders. All the stakeholders. Uh -huh. Globalization, private sector, the state. In Who else? Who else? What are the external factors? Politics, huh? Information technology. Information, ICT. Yes. Maybe we haven't gone into this. is a very, very broad objective. We want to understand social problems <coughs> and we also want to understand what are these external factors that are influencing social welfare policy or child production, for example. What are these external factors when it comes to child production? Child uh, for example, child, child production. Child the other day we were discussing. When I came back from the conference, right, and I was only talking about child production. Who are these external factors? Or what are these external factors influencing children and their protection? UN. UN, okay. Or UNCHR. Or uh, the cyber world, the, the, the children and pornography, or children and the crime, uh, the media. I mean, there's so many things that we can think of. And how do we understand the very role of external factors? When it comes to social uh, problems and social problems, very broad. So think about that. What is this? This course provides you, you know, when it comes to this object. What are these external factors that we have discussed? How do I connect? How do I understand when it comes to a, a social policy and social problems in Malaysia? That is one. Maybe we have achieved to to some extent. It's again a lot of reflections needed. Objective number two. This course offers a new perspective on the role played by social policies in Malaysia. What new perspective we have got? Or is nothing, no, no, no perspective at all. We are confused. Now the second objective is that at the end of this course, this course is supposed to offer a new perspective about the role played by social policies in Malaysia. Now tell me, what is this new perspective that you have gained? A new insights, a new ideas, a new way of looking at whatever it is. Distribute 
influencing the policies. Social workers do implement policies. That was the idea. But now, as social workers, as social policy students, we can also influence policies. Some people are involved in that. It's macro social work, whatever you call it. We can also do that. Okay, that's a new insight. What else? Each one can tell one thing. I'm sure. If you didn't get any insights, then I'm not sure what is that happening. Please. Uh, social policy involves a wide range of people. <coughs> So you think that now social policy is not just, though it looks very simple, it involves a lot many you know, actors. And as a policy student, as a social worker, you need to understand, maybe that is where the stakeholder analysis or policy actors, whatever it comes in. So it's just not just few people, but it's a lot more people uh, about whom we don't think most of the time when we work with the clients. Okay, that's a new insight. What else? You want to say something about this? Any new insights you got about this course? Social policy. Unfortunately, we could not discuss much about uh, your country and the uh, you know policies there. But what do you think? Any new insight? Um, yeah, please. A new perspective that I have learned from this course. Um, the role played by social policy determines uh, the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the land we walk. Okay. Um, like you have said that in Japan, they have to pay for the fresh air. So I think uh, social policy uh, determines that. And then that's a very new perspective for me. Thank you very yeah, much, Harry. We, we discussed this. Most of the time we think, okay, it's just work. But it decides a lot of things. Okay, that's very interesting. What else? Okay, please, please. Okay. Telecommunication documents. We said no, we don't agree. 
the word human rights should not be there in the tele uh, telecommunication policies or in documents. Basically, uh, you know, the, the whole world is saying that communication is a human right. You should have uh, access to communicate. And then the telecommunication policy, there was a conference and our minister, ambassador, saying that we cannot accept this. And why? There must be some reason. I'm not saying wrong and right, but we are trying to understand the actions of the state. There must be some logic. Maybe we can contribute to that. What else? If you understand this, it's done. And we don't need to go through all the slides. Otherwise, then, then it will be difficult. So it's very important exercise we should go through. Can you say something? What new insights you got? You're a PSW, you know, student. What new insights you got from this course? It's the same like social welfare administration that you have done. You have a course on social welfare and administration, right? So it's very same. So what, what is the difference that you got? Yeah. Oh, I never thought about that. <laughs> huh? Something I'm sure you must have got it. Hmm? Yeah, you think? Come back. I want at least one reflection from each one of you. And that's the feedback to me. And I will start this course next time on the basis. But still, there are a lot of refugees here. Why is that? What's happening? How, how can you contribute? What are what kind of organizations are actually working with refugees? Is it religion? Is it uh, Buddhist or is it Christian or is it? So you, you get into that and then try to use this policy as if it is a resource. That's another interesting insight. So we'll move on. Understand the interaction between policies. That means we have achieved a lot here. At least second, each one of you have got some new insight. I'm sure you think about it. You think about it and it will help you a later. Uh, we have achieved a lot on that. I'm very happy about that. Now, understand the interaction between policies, policies, society, and social systems. What is a social system? Like in human body, we have reproductive system, we have uh, uh, um, uh, neuro system or blood circulation system. What is social system? So how this class helped you or trying to help you to look at these policies yes. and you have society mm -hmm. in general and you have these social systems yes. whether it is uh, uh, elders and younger generation, the generational gap or generational differences or gender or power equations between the family members or the way the people you know, negotiate with the state for you know, benefits, there are a lot of systems here. So how this social policy knowledge, you know? helps you to understand society and societal systems better. Is, it, is, 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 is this course or, or is it too much of an objective? We can remove this. That's also possible. But maybe next we will not just keep this. We will just keep the second one and that's it. But do you think th th these objectives are not done by me? It's been done by the, the university, you know, when they were designing the course. And whatever I have come up with in 14 weeks is supposed to help this. Maybe they will revise these objectives Maybe after a few years and our course will look a little different. So do you think this course is able to help you to understand the interactions between policy, the society and the societal systems? In what ways? If yes, in what ways? Yeah, it's easy to say yes. It's very difficult to say no. You know, because you have to then you know, argue, you know. But it, it what is this? to understand how we can tap into the policies uh -huh. to, to channel their help to the, to the people who are involved in the system. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's good. What else? But to me, I mean, maybe uh, look at the weeks. Is there any week that we have spent on this actually? You know, 
or it starts from day or week one, two, you know, it's for them all, all those weeks. You know, basically we are talking about policies that, that means Malaysian society and, and social systems here. Any other, yes, I agree that how do we tap, how do we, you know, manipulate, how do we, you know, try to understand. Basically social work is all about changing these systems to sometimes, to some extent. The societal system that we don't agree with, whether it's power, hierarchy, inequality, uh, injustice, we are trying to, you know, mentor that, we are trying to tinker that, we are trying to change that. And to change that, we are trying to use policy, maybe, you know, maybe all you will use this, this, this uh, in lighter in your work. So these are the, some of the core objectives of this course, and we have done very well, I'm sure. Uh, given the resources and time we have, so I said already basically we will just uh, uh, reassess our, our, our evaluation. But we had a lot of challenges also, and I told you these challenges also in the beginning. Do you agree with these challenges again, or do you have any any other? Uh, we are in week one now. I'm talking about week one, right? So the week one takes a lot of time. After that, it's easy. So we also felt a lot of challenges. What do you think about these challenges? There still looks like challenges or they are not really challenges. What do you think about it? <laughs> you remember the slides in the beginning I showed you this. Yes. Look, social work students are not interested in this. And because they are not interested in you know who makes policies or how these policies are being formulated in Putrajaya, they are not worried in. They just, you know, help, help, help. You know? Most, most of the time they don't even think that they are using certain policies. What do you think? You will start using them now, or you are already using it. What do you think? You are your own an example. I don't know. I still remember. It took three months to you know for them to you know to act. What do you think now? You as a you are now better equipped to push the system. If you are in, if you are placed in the same hospital, given the same job, do you think your work will be better or different now? Definitely better and different. Why? Why do you think? <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, each one of you will, will be able to do that. Um, the campus Interested in that, start using that. 
Whether social workers should engage in political activities and take a political stand, what do you think? Huh? After this class? Huh? Maybe some of the social workers should be. Maybe some of the social workers should. Not everyone. Not everyone. Huh? But we still have to be yes. politicians. Yeah. We still have to, you know. We have to know about the political like, environment in Malaysia, but, but, but no, not, not all, not all of us. But one, one of you have done that student uh, you, you guys have done. Yeah. 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 So why 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 have you selected that, that topic then? If you don't believe that you know, <laughs> social workers should not be involved in politics, student politics, I mean, student maybe, representation. Maybe it's like itself, then they believe that politics political environment in Malaysia you can influence all the policies. Yes. Mm. And then they work on it. Mm. Okay. Because they are the decision makers. They are the decision makers. They are yeah, the so you're still not very sure about this. started your journey, you will reach somewhere. I, I was also like that. What oh, this policy? No, no, I'm not interested. But now I see the relevance. So, so try and understand this. Then uncritical acceptance of existing policies and the dominant critical discourse is another challenge as social workers again. Are we critical now? As you guys said, now we are critical, you know, we're dealing with this. So I think we don't accept policies as it is. Whether it is Malaysia one policy, or PR 1M policy or whatever policy, we will not just take it like that. Yes. We will now look critically. Why is this? Whom, whom it is serving? How much money is being spent? Is it taxation money or it is donations or it is a loan? You know, we will start asking these questions. Earlier, we don't ask. Okay, 200 ringgits for uh, student watches, it's a good policy. But now, but now, all these 200 ringgits you know, are being spent by each student. And what are the aspects are they spending? Are they really using those books? What kind of books are they buying? You know, how students are using these watches? Whether they're really buying or they're just selling the you know, coupons for 150 or 100 ringgits? What kind of books they're buying? Why the government in first place brought this policy? Is it for the you know student support or they have a lot of money? A lot of questions. You have to ask. If you're not asking, you're accepting this. Oh, it's a good policy. Then we are not social policy students. Journalist and a researcher. Journalists they report every day. Yes, uh, and researchers also, you know, try to investigate and find out the answer. What is the difference? We researcher will give critical analysis on certain issues, whereas journalists only report. Report exactly, but looks like they uh, they look for you know uh, uh, sensational you know yes. sensational yes. issues. Yes. How do they look at that? They look at Areas that we, we, we even can't think of it, you know. For example, what is the relationship between Bush and his, uh, you know, uh, wife or whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or Clinton is, uh, and his wife. You know? We look at areas, you know, where there is a sensation, where there is a secret, where there is a, you know, a lot of you know, public interest. They don't just report just like investigative journalism or crime journalism. There are interesting things that are happening. So maybe we will become you know, a little bit critical social workers. Okay, then subjects of social policy courses are unfamiliar and their knowledge of various aspects of social policy as well as diverse social groups that are subject of social policy is generally implicit fact. Basically it is saying that it's, it's, it's not easy. When we are talking about social policies, we are also looking at our own you know, uh, ways of living, our own ideologies, our own you know, understanding about other races, other cultures, other you know, uh, our communities. You know? and, and in that way, I think uh, 
somehow we, we managed to look at this. Okay, now, so to some extent I think we achieved, I'm very happy, at least my own thing, so you also make your own uh, analysis about this course objectives and where you uh, where you are. I see uh, he has a lot of uh, uh, photocopies, that's nice. For each week she has a lot of photocopies, that's nice. Now this one, what do you think about this? We are still in week one, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Week one, and a lot of things we discussed. What is this slide? And how much are you, you know, using this? Huh? No, no, even I, if you ask me, no, not, not all the time. Yeah. Reciprocal uh, teaching and learning. I would have added one more, you know. Reciprocal teaching and learning. Or reciprocal social work practice, whatever you put there. Are we doing this? Huh? Or it's still not coming. In your, now you will start your field work, right? Yeah. What is the field work all about? How these courses will help you to do the field work? As the Trashne said, now she'll be more, you know, uh, um, aware how to work in a medical setting, for example. Where is this understanding came from? Of course, from classes, uh, to some extent, and her own reading and her own, you know, whatever. So, we predict, or oh, this could happen, and we question, we summarize, we clarify ourselves, again we predict. I think for social policy, this is a very important slide. All your answers should be like this. You write something, this is what I thought in the beginning, you know, then you are, these are the questions I had, and then this is how the, you know, summary, whatever, and again I had, I have to clarify some more things, for which again I predict. And it goes on like this. Any social problem, any social work issue, you use this, your answer will be better. What is the, you know, things that I know? What is that I can predict about disability, you know, and uh, issues in Malaysia? I don't know anything, but you can at least say something. Right? Then, what kind of questions? What kind of summaries? Tell me, no problem. We just a third slide, we are ready for it. <laughs> so, please remember this slide, I think it's very useful. Uh, uh, most of the time I also forget, but I try to bring in this. I thought I'd put all your faces there, but I don't have all your photographs there. What is the importance of this slide? Big one again. How they influence the policies? How they How they How they How How do they brought some change? Do you think your 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 pictures can be there? Yes. Huh? Yes. No? You'll be there at least one time. March is March is coming. March eighth. Maybe this time, you know, they should they have some man who also bring changes in life of women or in the society. It's very important. This slide really, you know makes me a lot of uh, hope that, you know, we can do a lot. Just small, small, whatever, whether it's breastfeeding movement, or whether the human organ donations movement, or whether it is uh, refugees, take up one, one simple thing and work on that. Whatever I have done till now, it's about social work education in Nepal, that's it. You type my name, it comes only education. Or a little bit, I'm very passionate about that. I'm now trying to understand what can be done in Malaysia, for example, which we'll talk about next next semester of social work education. Just one issue. Any issue, there are hundreds of issues. Yes. Do you think any issue that touches you already here? That you can think of for your fieldwork, then you can think of for your research. I was talking to uh, uh, Safina yesterday, uh, the other day. How you can make your career out of you know, your passion? Mm -hmm. What is passion after all? You have to build your passion. I'm sure in this course or in other courses, there must be something that touched your, you know, your feelings, your heart, and you, you work on that. For example, refugees. Maybe you will do your placement in refugees. You will start looking at how these refugee children are being taught. What are the teachers? What kind of teachers they have? I don't know what you do. There are a lot of things that can be done. Your name can be you know, associated with refugee issues. Who knows? All these women are like that. When they started, they never knew that they will be on the parang, you know. Yes. Uh, the they never knew. You read those stories. It's still available. They never knew any clue about what they're going to be. And they never even thought of being one. Being one. That's the you know, beauty of that. And they are. Because they started doing something and people start to recognize it. And social policy can be like that. Take one simple policy and you can spend your life on that. Spend your life on that. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> your life on that. Yeah. So these women, I think, they've been doing such kind of work. 
they're in the same week one. So what is the policy now? No simple answer. No simple answer, yes. Yes? No simple answer, but what is our understanding of policy? It's a document or it's a statement or what is that? How it looks like? It could be a document, it could be a statement, it could be a, you know, a directive, it could be a guideline. What else? What else? What is the policy? Very difficult to have. They have 14 weeks. How can they define policy? Huh? I think we discussed some three things. What is the policy? What it should be? It's about, it should talk about resources, yes. It should talk about a goal or objective. And it should also talk about how we can achieve that. So policy has only a minor relevance to their work or not. We do you know, uh, talk about policies and define another public policy, another key term that you will come or you will come across. And then we will also talk about social policy. Policy, public policy, and social policy. You know, little difference should be able to understand. What is that? It should have a clear and unique purpose. It should achieve a desired goal, whether it's public policy, social policy, or policy, whatever, that is considered to be in the best interest of all members of the society, because we're talking about public policies, policies that are related to each and every citizen in this country. What are those? Can you give some example? Transportation policy, or, or any other health policy. Education policies, they're all public policies. But within that, when we are talking about to a particular section, then we are talking about a social or social welfare policy. So considering that public policy is an action taken by the government that ultimately affects all the public, we call it public policies. But within that, we focused on social policies or social welfare policies. So we should not be confused. These are the kind of words that you will see in the literature. So what is a social policy then? I just speak, don't read that. Social policy is about all about human well-being, especially when we talk about you know disadvantaged groups or you know groups that needs a little extra voice. Social policy is all about uh, one needs commitment, one needs to be able to empathize with others, one needs to interpret the world around. It's basically what kind of values you should have when you're talking about social policy. Social policy is the study of social relations necessary for human well-being, a study of social systems. Basically, it's a study of interactions between policy, society, and social systems. You define whatever way, you know. Basically, this is what social policy, and the systems by which well-being may be promoted. We are talking about well-being, human well-being, well-being of the people who are not, you know, are covered by, by many policy programs that we have. So, there are different ways to look at policies. You remember this slide? Yes. Okay, can you explain this now at least? There are substantive policies, there are administrative policies, there are reactive policies, there are proactive policies. We are trying to understand the very nature of the policy here. Right? What kind of policy is this? For example, one Malaysia or Malaysia, Malaysia truly Asia. What kind of policy is that? Why, why is government spending a lot of money on, on this advertisement? Or you know, Petronas, you know, advertisements. You remember Petronas, you know, during uh, Madhya Day, you know, they talk about all this. During Diwali, they come up with something. You know, during uh, uh, Hari Raya, they come up with something. What is that? Hmm? Do you think that is a uh, that is a uh, proactive policy? They're trying to you know build an image for Malaysia and Petronas, you know, the Petronas contribution, or Malaysia is a very, you know, multicultural, you know, they are, they are trying to attract tourists, or they are trying to, you know, build a, 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 a what do you call, a, a national patriotism, you know, they are trying to do something, or uh, there is a disaster and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, or there is a bird, uh, flu or something like that, uh, everyone has to, you know, cover up, you know, that is the action, you know, the active forces. You remember this line? Yes. It's not difficult, you know. 
there are some administrative policies like you know okay universities should be function like this like this like this you know there are policies there are policies which are substantively done like you know many policies that are related to constitution you know very detailed they describe you know there are vertical policies and there are horizontal policies you know for example the health or uh, or um, or um, say uh, tourism it talks about tourism it talks about health it talks about recreation you know it's so horizontally two three government departments will talk about that so there are reactive there are proactive so just there are current policies and there are future policies what uh, nazib yesterday was talking about is actually vr1 is a future policy is talking about it vr1 vr2 vr3 right vr uh, bring you know vr i am you know is talking about this is a future policy if this government comes back what is that is going to you know offer so there are current policies and there are future policies so we need to understand you know this right there is a tech must we also need to remember few people in this social policy thing who actually have done a lot of work and who from whose work we can actually learn a lot what is that we know about this richard titmus is a professor at london london school of economics has done a lot of work as so some few people you know who contributed to social policy and social policy studies in uk is thinking and writing how you know to shape the british welfare state so we also talked about few people like this what else we have done in week 1 week 1 what is policy what is social policy what is public policy please what is uh, types of policies reactive proactive or current or future and some people like him who has done some work on on social policies what else we have done on week 1 anything else and maybe we also you know spend a little bit time on what is the relationship between social policy and social work social justice is a central goal of the social work profession and how do we achieve this justice using social policies you know to achieve this justice you know we also look at practitioners lack you know policy analysis tools that's why this class is very important in that way where you have learned some you know policy analytical tools and how how can we analyze what are the you know models that we have social workers face numerous challenges within the changing social policy structures okay now bn government is gone another government came they have changed the policies again again we need to upgrade and understand you know so social workers face numerous challenges with the changing social policy structure while trying to meet the clients needs clients needs also increasing malaysia is prosperous but at the crime rate is also increasing what should be done you have seen one slide you remember i have shown you one slide even children children abuse cases increasing there is evidence that the society is progressing but we are abusing more and more children is that correct If that is correct how we work as social workers so these are the some of the challenges that we face and and this course should be able to help you so that's where you know we talk about social work and social policy they share you know territories it's a shared territory that we work social policy influences social work practices social work practices influences social policies that can be done and and practice affects policy in complex and diverse ways and the responsibility of social workers is not simply acting according to the law or follow the procedures but work and influence policies in the best interest of the children or the clients or disability whatever so this is the area that we we will be working in anything else we did on week 1 where we can you say something these are i thought the highlights from week 1 what are they to tell my lord there week 1 is very tense actually anything anything that you can you would like to add Hmm? Okay, week number two, we talk about the welfare state. state. So, what is that we have done in that in that week? Equality, we have done again. Okay. Why? Why is that we want to understand equity and equality? Because everyone is getting what they need. Really so, this is where whether the state is offering, you know, what kind of, you know. policies does uh, malaysian state you know whether we are all equally treated whether equity is respected okay what else what is welfare types of welfare that of state sources of welfare you remember the moment we do tax you know welfare what is welfare 
What are the sources of welfare? Okay, state is one source, right? NGOs is one source. The civil society is one source. Private market is one source. What else? Informal, you know, social capital is one source. The sources of welfare. The church is a source. The mosque is a source, right? Where we get some welfare. What else? Second week is also very important, very, very you know, I mean, lengthy one actually. It is the core, the welfare state. Where is this welfare state you know, concept or notion comes from? What we mean by uh, when we say a welfare state? Is Malaysia a welfare state? That is the question is coming. Is Malaysia a welfare state? Explain. How do you write that? Yes or no? Yes, Malaysia is a welfare state. Okay, then you give me the logic. How do you prove? Okay, no, Malaysia is not a welfare state. Again, prove. <laughs> to prove that what kind of insights and knowledge we should have. Hmm? Second week is very important. <laughs> uh, what else? What else should we have learned? Come on, it's not very difficult. Uh, types, of, uh, okay. states. types of states, yes. Liberal state, democratic state, federal state, centralized state. Why didn't we discuss that? The type of state. Why, why, why we need to worry about the very type of state? Because that's involved to be uh, policies and the exactly. welfare providers. Exactly. The, the very type of the state also influences the type of welfare or welfare policies that it comes up with. If it is a dictatorial state, maybe the policy process is very different. If it is a federal state, Malaysia is a federal state, you know, federal government. The way the policies are being done is different. It is a unitary state. It is a, it is a market oriented state. Remember? So the very understanding about the state itself is very important for us. And that's what we have done and we do. It's a truly political science, but we can't escape this. The very definitions of welfare. What we mean by welfare? And there are arguments about welfare and criticism about welfare, you know. If it is a welfare state, more and more people will become lazy. So we don't want to become a welfare state, remember? So week number two is very important again. So we have a few slides there. We also looked at what uh, the current government is saying. We also looked at what the opposition is saying. They're using this welfare state as their you know, a party manifesto or isn't that to influence people? They're very, you know, and they gave their own explanations about what we, what they mean by welfare state, right? Then we also looked at what is state, what is nation, what is national state. So you can just again go through this. I'm going to give you these slides. So just I'm trying to. So there are these types of states. You remember? And then we also discuss a concept called democracy, which is again very important when we discuss state or state functions, representative democracy and the participatory democracy, centralized state, decentralized state, liberal state and social welfare state. What we mean by a welfare state, where we, we look at equality of opportunities, equal distribution of wealth and public responsibility for those unable to avail themselves of minimal provisions for a good life. Basically, a welfare state is a state which, which offers you know, these services. You can see that. What is welfare? Again, do you remember this? The chairman, chancellor? Yeah, I think there are two, I mean, Bismarck and model, you know, people will talk about Bismarck and his contributions. It's called Bismarck model or you know, there's another model called beverage model in the UK. You know, basically they're talking about both welfare states, but a little different. So some of the thinkers again, that Herbert Spencer, who, who talks about the survival of the fittest, basically he's saying that we should not really protect poor and unfit would simply allow them to reproduce and delay the social progress. Basically, he's talking about a liberal state where you know the, the, the people has to work and produce and should be given opportunities to produce, but they should not be given any uh, special uh, protective measures, for example. The American sociologist Lester Frankfurt, the beverage model, the beverage report in the UK, you can see this. 
Uh, he talks about five you know, things that the state should address. Again, there is a titmus, which we just saw in the week number one. So these are some of the people who, uh, who you should read about this. And then uh, this three worlds of welfare capitalism, the, the, uh, the Esping Anderson, he, look, we have a lot of welfare states all over the world. Then he classified all these welfare states into certain classifications. Otherwise, there are different people talking about different things. So he came up with these three different you know, states. One is the, the social democratic regime or the social democratic states, the, the liberal regime and the, the corporatist regime or the corporatist state. You can read a little bit about that. It's very important. Anything else? Big two. I'm rushing up now. Anything else? Especially this, this uh, Andersons, you know, three regimes. Do you have any any doubt on that? Well, how he came up with these three different classifications? You remember a word called a level of decommodification. No, you guys have to read about this. It's everywhere is there. He came up with these three classifications on simply on the level of decommodification in each. State. For example, in the liberal states, what is decommodification? Where the level of market and its 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 its, its play, you know, what kind of role the, does a market plays? Decommodification. If it is a liberal state, for example, the market plays a higher role. That means the decommodification is not there. I mean, commodification is higher. There is no decommodification. So that is the you know, logic that he used and came up with this three different kinds of regimes what he talk about. For example, social democratics, the level of decommodification is high. You know, you can see it favor the universalist values, universalism and selectivism. It talks about all people in a particular community or a particular country. Whereas liberal regimes talks about selective people. Disability, within the disability are also, also multiple disabilities, for example. So the corporatist regimes, it talks about you know, the work, work-related pensions and their performance, high, you know, achievement model. You just go through this once again, it will be okay. So this is a very important uh, week two. Week three, someone coming? Week three, week one, we know what is policy. Week two, what is welfare state? Week three. At least there, it's there. Institutional mechanisms for? Institutional mechanisms. What do we mean by this institutional mechanism? 